Hey guys, how's it going? It's Alpha here. Thanks for joining me for another Puzzle and Dragons video. This is going to be the final part of the Challenge Descended Dungeons. Um, so we're starting off, there's a bunch of dungeons here, so I'm not running them live as I did in the other videos because I think I've got seven, um, seven dungeons to get through. So um, for the sake of time and just being sure I could clear the dungeons before they're uh, no longer available, I ran them just as I was able to, recorded them, and we're going to go through them at a 50% increased speed so we can kind of uh, uh, go through all... I think it's seven of them. Um, anyway, so we are in Indigo Descended. Let me pull the dungeon up here. Um, let's see, Indigo, Indigo. So seven by six dungeon, and not nothing too tricky about it. Uh, you can see I kind of got myself in a little bit of hurt right here by not breaking the defense on these guys, which is pretty high. They have a... Uh, 866,000 defense, so I was just not breaking through. I would need to get multiple combos there with TPAs. Um, pretty much, I think, getting close to the uh, 100x mark to break through the defense. So I used his Anami and pretty much just pinged him down. So nothing too eventful there. And then moving on to Cerberus next. Um, Again, this is actually kind of uh, a boring part here because he hits for um, just 5,000. Uh, well, 5,000 and change, 5,300, and makes a bit of poison. Um, and that's all he does until he gets below 25%, in which case he hits for 32,000. So he'll just go and uh, wallop on you. So um, you definitely want to um, you know, not get hit by that, but at the same time, Short of that, as long as you could heal, generate you know the heart orbs you need, and clear out the poisons, um, you can actually stall here for a bit. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, I didn't really have any reason to kind of rush through or use skills. You know, I could clear stuff off, so it really wasn't a very big deal. Uh, right there, I have to admit, I uh, I messed up there. <laughs> I was I was trying to um, uh, actually attack, and I just missed the 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 water orb somewhere. So I mean, it's somehow it happens to me a bit on these larger boards where um, I just kind of get lost as to what I have and haven't connected. And even though this team has just ridiculous amounts of time extends, I somehow still get you know caught up in it sometimes. Uh, and you can see here, even though I'm, I'm getting rid of some orbs, I'm just not really generating the light orbs that I need to be able to attack. So I'm kind of... Uh, like I said, just kind of stalling out a bit, um, doing a little healing, clearing out the poison, and there's not really any danger here. Um, I guess the biggest danger would be actually accidentally activating when I don't mean to and only doing like a, a 25x or something like that where um, I could put him into the danger, uh, danger zone. Um, so there we go, a little bit of a skyfall, and that's going to wrap it for Cerberus. I'm going to move on to the blue Grimoire, and she's got 5 million hit points and a shield of 50% against um, light and dark. So definitely not the best setup for this team, but um, we would be able to uh, work our way through. Um, you can see again, I'm, I'm short on those light orbs, so I'm just kind of hanging out a bit. Um, again, I don't want to be getting dinged up. She does change away your heart, so I wanted to heal up, get a shield up, and um, make sure that uh, you know I'm set up and I'm not going to be in any danger. I go through. I make a nice uh, six, or it was either a six or seven combo on my own, and Sky falled into eleven combo, and that's going to take her out, uh, shield or no shield. Uh, so let me move on to Belial, and this is a different version where it's not the countdown with the uh, giant attack. He actually um, goes ahead, he, uh, what's his preemptive here? Oh, he tries to do a skill bind, that's what it is. And then after that, he does a few different uh, attacks. He'll hit for, well, if you don't hit him at all, he does a pretty big attack, and once he gets hit, he starts making... Uh, Changing up orbs, making poisons, making uh, fire, stuff like that. So we definitely want to just get on out of there. And again, 
you know, the, the kind of cool thing about 7x6 is when you're matching up towards the bottom, just the amount of shifting and sky falls that are possible make a bunch of cascades and sky falls and obviously high combos, which do very well for Sakuya, who um, does higher attack based on the amount of combos you get in there. Um, so Amon, I had a shield up, so his gravity didn't take me down 99%, so I was able to heal up on the first turn. And not only that, but um, he also just skips a turn after this. So I didn't really have to worry about killing him. He skips, gives us two more turns. Um, we don't want to hang around much after that. You will be dead for sure. Well, this team would be. Um, with some of the more tanky teams around, uh, not all the teams would be. So that's it. Now we're moving on to Indigo. And she goes and throws down um, some poison, some jammers. We block the jammers, have locked poison on the board, but that is where uh, Maide KG, I think is the guy's name, um, goes ahead, refreshes the board, which if you guys don't know, a refresh of the board is very different than like a Dark Kali active. Pre pretty much if you just think of everything getting swiped aside and a new set of orbs falling down. That's what a refresh does. Um, versus someone like a Dark Kali or a Light Kali, where they have a set um, a set type and number of each orb that are guaranteed to appear each turn. Um, anyways, Gravities, uh, Yomi active, and that's, that's that. Uh, down goes Indigo. So we're going to move right on. We're hopping into Sonya Grand here. I'm taking my... Elm team. Now this is uh, super sped up at the moment because of course out of the three dragons I get the volcano dragon and I have to say I thought when this happened that this was just completely it for the dungeon. I thought I was going to die because you get hit a decent amount. This team doesn't have a lot of hit points and the recovery on the team is also not very good. So I thought I would not be able to continue attacking and recovering um, so I did have both Soraya and Gadius actives where I could generate hearts on my own if needed, but I actually was able to just continue comboing. Um, there's a bunch of time extends on this team, but keep comboing, you know, match up hearts as needed. And I kept myself out of the kill zone where one of his attacks would take me out. And I did get a bit lucky with some sky falls of hearts as well. Um, so anyways... There we go. So now we're finally, we're back to our regular 50% speed up. And um, we are done with the Fire Absorb, which makes this dungeon run a lot, um, a lot smoother and quicker than if I were to, uh, um, what's it called, go through everything <laughs> that uh, uh, in real time with all that stalling. So anyways, okay. So we... Take another hit, now again we can't heal, and he's pretty much full, so I, I just want to be sure I get out my 36x multiplier, which is the full attack that um, Ilm is able to put together. We do some TPAs there, not rows, but we do have TPAs on the team, so it, it helps out a bit, and of course just having a 36x attack helps out, and we take out Volcano Dragon. Finally, <laughs> that guy is such a pain. Those absorbs are just annoying. I mean, I guess it's just a check where if you're bringing that element, you know that you're going to have to combo high, you're going to have to heal up, and it can be a, a bit of a challenge. That's all. So unfortunately here, I don't end up with the uh, proper amount of orbs. That's one of the things with, with uh, Gadius. You're not really guaranteed that 36x attack. Um, potentially you aren't with Leylon, but Gadius has four orb types he creates, which are fire, dark, light, and heart. So it makes it a lot tougher. Um, so going on through here, so I have uh, a, uh, what's it called? Uh, some rows being made, some TPA at the top, and we're going to be taking Blue Sonia right on out of there. And we move on to Green Sonia, who one-shots you, so you need to take her out. Um, so once again, uh, I don't know if the uh, 
the video just skipped there for a moment, but I used Soraya's active if, uh, if it didn't work out for some reason, you couldn't see it. Um, again, we went row TPAs and at 36 X, we're doing a bunch of damage and we're definitely going to take, uh, take green Sonia out. Now here, red Sonia, I originally, I actually tried this dungeon more than once. I tried it with, um, uh, Awoken Freyr and just trying to make rows and hit six combos was pretty difficult, but when you're making, uh, dual colored boards getting uh, quite a bunch of combos is pretty simple um, and actually I was thinking of making some tutorial videos to show how to deal with certain situations like that making rows making uh, dual colored boards things like that just general orb movement um, uh, definitely you know more of a beginner guide but if you are a beginner player and you think you would benefit from that let me know in the comments below I'd, I'd really like to know um, Anyway, so we're at Sonia Gran, and she does have a resolve at 50%. So that is why I used Subaki because I wanted to attack, but obviously I didn't want to take her all the way out and kill her. So I'm trying to figure out. I see that I have the orbs on the board to make uh, two TPAs um, for both light and fire, but unfortunately the way I organized the board, it just didn't quite work out, but it might have worked out better because I did hit her down quite a bit. Um, and you can see here, we get another dual colored board and that's gonna be a wrap for um, Sonia Grand here. We just make a nice five row board and that will most definitely do enough damage. That is tons of damage and Sonia Grand goes down. Um, let's see who will be next. So I think at this point, honestly, the, the dungeons start getting a bit harder. There's uh, some trickier stuff to deal with. So I start using more of my, my hammer teams. So, so my theory, you know, when you have hammer teams, it's, you know, everything looks like a nail when all you've got is a hammer, right? I don't know. It's like, a, you know, some kind of a saying, you know, everything, whenever, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And that's kind of like what Raw Dragon is. It's, if you match up everything, whatever's in front of you is going to die. Um, here we have Minerva. She has a combo shield up. She has a light and dark reduction. And honestly, when the full combos hit, it really doesn't even matter. Um, of course, I don't because I don't connect the, the waters right there. So she starts messing with the board a bit. But um, yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't. I mean, this team is literally capable of just match and sweep, match and sweep, match and sweep. Um, it's really that, I wouldn't say easy, because getting uh, boards at one you can actually activate on, but then also um, uh, um, actually getting the activation, it's not exactly easy. You know, there are a ton of time extends on this kind of prototypical raw dragon build, so um, it's definitely... Uh, a pretty powerful, robust team that, I mean, that's why it's the default, well, was the default arena team um, for arena version one, because it could pretty much deal with anything. You have full board changers. Everyone on the team is unbindable with the exception of Indra, um, but he's not needed for activation. So it's really um, a pretty amazing team here. And I think uh, do we take her out there? Yeah, I thought so. Just a 9x without even matching the, the light was able to do that. So you can see everyone here has their uh, their their damage reduction shields for um, for light and dark, but really against this team it just doesn't matter, to be honest. Um, so once again, I have the ability to match up. I don't, but I get some sky falls here, which kind of you know, save me a bit, a little lucky. So there we go. Down goes the Woken Neptune. We move on to Ceres. Um, again, skill binds don't matter. Of course, we have 100% skill bind resist on this team. And we're just going to go after it and match up. Um, we get... I think I, I had the ability to make a 9x, but just, you know, nothing happened there. I was able to clear off orbs, and now we have a board we can actually activate on. Um... And the cool thing with Raw Dragon, well, I guess one of the reasons he's so darn good, and that was actually a 9x, but I could have done a full multiplier. Um, but you can see um, she does that a bit, and I think she uh, she she whoops you after a certain amount of turns, 30,000. 30, 
Um, I do have green resist latents on the team because, like I said, it was it was kind of built up for Arena One. So to deal with um, Parvati's uh, big hit, you need some green resist latents. But anyways, there's a 64x, and there there goes series. Um, moving on to a Vulcan Hades now. Um, we have a 99% gravity, then a big cooldown to kind of get things going. Um, really not too difficult here. You just need to uh, take your time, get the boards uh, set up right. And I don't get uh, blue there. I don't know if it was on the board, to be honest. You know, with so much time, honestly, you don't even really need the full multiplier to uh, take him out. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, match up again. This time we get a Skyfall into the full multiplier. Down goes Hades. That's why I, I kind of like to use different um, teams on some of the, uh, I guess maybe I'd say like easier level descends because Raw Dragon, it's pretty much the same thing every time, you know, just work on getting a full, full match of all the elements and the hearts and that's about it. Um, so I've got a different strategy that I use here than most people. Most people use a delay or a um, counter attack to take out these guys, uh, Zeus and Hera. They do have a bunch of hit points, 8 million there. Um, but really, this strategy works pretty well as well. I put up a shield, I knock them dead in one shot, and then I go and... What happens this turn doesn't actually matter because they heal right up to 50%. So without even any activation, I knock them out of the resolve. Now I can once again use a Dark Kali for a guaranteed activation board. I could use Raw Dragon so I have, you know, all day and then some to match up. I could go, you know, get a cup of coffee and come back and still have time to match and down they go. So there goes Zeus and Hera. Um... Which is a great card. For some for some reason, my Zeus and Hera skill ups um, love love happening. I actually, I think I fed three at one point, and I got all three. It's the only time it's ever happened for me. Um, anyways, once again, here we are on um, a raw dragon descend, so it's not super super exciting. Um, this is the mechanical god uh, Deus Ex Machina, or I guess you'd say Deus Ex. Machina, um, which is uh, Latin for God in the Machine. Um, and there we go. There's a, what I do? No full multiplier. Come on. Come on, Alpha. This, I mean, the beginning here is not too hard. As long as you don't, actually, those, those gears can be more tricky than anything else. They give you those uh, cooldowns. They, um, uh, what's it called? They hit for a decent amount too, so if you don't break the defense, that's actually one of the trickier spots. Like earlier in the video where I had to use an Izanami because of the gears. Um, anyways, we go ahead, we set up a, uh, you know, we matched up how we could. We, we didn't have hearts, we didn't have um, lights on the board, so now we have a board we can actually activate on. Um, so you can see this team has the time extends where I can spend time stacking. So typically what you do, you know, you stack the bottom two rows if possible. So a match of three on top of a match of three, same thing left and right. And then the correct way to do it is you go vertical and start working your way across. Um, sometimes I end up matching horizontally too high and it kind of messes up the board a bit. Um, here I actually did have a good board that I could have activated on, but after clearing the blind, I was only able to get a 9x because the, the fire eluded me. Um, but you can see here we are looking at a 0x, um, but if you look at his leader skill, he will, what will he do? Hit for 15,000, hit for 18,000, you know, something like that. So whatever it is, we can tank it. Um, oh, there we go. He didn't even bother with that. He tried to... Uh, bind us, which is pretty foolish against this team. Um, it definitely kind of uh, spoils you a bit when you're just so resistant against skill binds, against um, uh, actually being bound, having the cards bound. Pretty easy stuff. So here we have one of the random uh, mech guys. It's either Hadar is the black, or black one, the dark one, and 
Uh, the one that we actually got is Canopus. So, and these guys are, they're materials for, who is it? Someone, um, oh, I think Ragnarok Dragon. I was looking at him, but I'm really uh, not sold. I want to spend the monster points. But um, you need some of those. Um, here we've got some Golem action going on. So, these guys, uh, actually, I, I, I don't mind getting this one because he skips. Well, they all skip a bit. They skip a bit, and then they do hit decently hard, over 20,000. Um, they don't have too many hit points between 1.8 and 2.7, depending on which one you get. So going for a 9x attack is just kind of, um, you know, where I'm at here. Set up a little cascade there and reduce Skyfall into the full attack. And of course, that'll take out the Fire Golem. Um, so moving on, again, when you're dealing with the resolve like this, it's nice to have a delay, have a counterattack, whatever it might be. Um, I don't really bother with that, to be honest, on this. Oh, I think the video skipped just a bit, but all I missed was me um, doing some matches and forgetting my uh, my dark there, actually. Um, anyways, this guy's resolve. It's not really that difficult. He hits for 15,000, so you got to make sure that you're actually um, you're healed up a bit um, before you act. You know, before you try and kill him. And then after that, uh, he will, uh, does he make jammers or something? No, he, he does a, um, a reduced movement time for 99 turns. So, of course, with a raw dragon, I don't really have to worry about that because um, his active boosts up movement time. So you work right past that. And looking at all the actives I had available, I knew that I could get them right back up using... A raw dragon so that's what I went ahead and did I didn't want to mess with those poisons since it didn't have any heal on the board um, and that's pretty much that's gonna be a wrap I think uh, I think I might have been running this dungeon at work so you know sometimes I have to deal with work stuff in the middle of uh, running dungeons that's why you get some kind of unexplained delays there but that is most definitely gonna take out Sheriff Boda I think that's the guy's name right Sh yeah, Shero Spada, Shero Spada. Um, at this point, he did his attack, and I can pretty much just look at whatever. He's got, I think, just one hit point. He stays at one hit point, so you can do anything. You don't have to actually um, do an activation, and I choose to eliminate some of the orbs I have the most of so that I have a good board I can activate with, um, on the default here, I don't have to use a Dark Kali in order to set up a board. Um, so, Dave's Ex Machina here, uh, she has got, um, uh, what's it called, a 50% shield, not an absorb or a uh, damage shield, but it's just a reduction. So, you know, if you're hitting hard enough, it doesn't really uh, matter too much. I go ahead, I matched up pretty well there, a nice 8 combo. Um, I don't think this is going to take her out though, yeah, it does not take her out. She has a little switch for one turn, which doesn't matter too much. Again, um, I'm not in too much danger with interest shield up, you really, um, you don't get yourself in too much trouble. Um, okay, we swap around back and you can see, you know, I've got, you know, my regular amount of hit points back. Um, we do have a board we could activate on, so no real uh, need to worry about that. Just trying to figure out the board for a moment. You know, the blue, the water orbs are a bit spaced out, so that's why I choose a water orb to move with. Um, and I went, I think I messed up what was going to be a TPA there, but it ended up not really mattering. Um, and I, I hit that diagonal at the end. Um, so... Get a little gears. Let's see. And who I think I was running here with GSTG, one of my best friends there. Um, so this is Zayrog, and again, this one. Um, I don't know if I like. I almost feel like just talking about the weather on this. I think I've posted like two or three Zayrog clears, and for me, it's like a, it's a methodical thing now, uh, which is good because I want to. Um, 
And that was stupid right there. I had like a TPA and I, uh, I, I messed it up and made it like this giant match, but whatever. Um, but I do want to farm up a max skilled Zayrog. And right now it's on half uh, stamina for uh, co-op. So I'm probably going to be hopping in and running a bunch of that stuff going on soon. Um, anyways, uh, it's, you know, I, I have a formula for what I do here. Uh, on this one, I want to make sure I get through, so I use an active. I can use Vishnu early in the dungeon, then have him back up, so that is exactly what I go ahead and do. I want to make a TPA um, match up there, little red TPA, which I don't think really matters, and that's definitely going to be enough to take them out. Um, next, we, is it Pirate Dragon next? Who's next? Pirate Dragon. All right, so these guys, actually, I, I think some of the hardest stages on... Um, this dungeon are the the first stage just because you know obviously one mess up and you're dead um, the uh, not this guy this guy he's tough because he you know you're going against elements but realistically he gives you a ton of turns he will put up a status shield after his two turns then he does another uh, an attack buff after and gives you another two turns and well then he'll kill you but if you're still around at that point, you know, you've got some problems. Um, anyways, um, the the dungeon with the metal dragons can be a bit of a pain because, again, typically it's a one and done. You don't really have any uh, buffer there. If they're on a one-turn countdown, if you don't, if you mess up your, your combo, you're done. Um, what else? And then, obviously, um, one of my least favorite stages of, of any dungeon, which is um, Zayrog's six combo or you die with one second taken off. It's just nerve-wracking, you know. Um, so we've got, you know, the fire samurai guy. We're just matching up a bit. Um, messed up a diagonal there, but what are you going to do? Do get a nice skyfall of wood orbs. And um, look, we got another two turns to take him out. So he, he is pretty, pretty... Um, easy this guy I and mean, as long as you remember to make some TPAs when you can um, because you know you're going against element if you're using a Bastet team uh, anyways let's see moving on so this is another kind of easy floor where if you had to stall you can try and target some guys and um, you know you'd be able to stall out there so you actually set up a nice little cascade to get the seven combo uh, I'm starting to work on my cascade skills it's definitely one of the more um, advanced methods of playing the game. Setting up cascades is pretty tricky. Um, you know, understanding the different orb formations and um, being fast and just kind of speed stacking is definitely one level of skill in the game. Um, but being able to just kind of smoothly see the board and set up cascades is just amazing. If you guys have never heard of Tevi, who's a uh, make some Puzzle and Dragons video. It's T-E-V-V-I-E. -E. You can search for him on YouTube, and he has just some amazing, amazing runs. Um, so here we're able to get a seven combo. We have a really nice uh, uh, cooldown here on the unevolved little Zayrog guy, or whatever whatever he's called, um, Black, Black Extreme Dragon something. Um, so we got a nice cooldown. So what I like to do here, so like I said, it's like a formula for me. I will um, use a Vishnu active on the kill turn on this guy, if at all possible, because as of right now, I'm going to have two turns of wood skyfall. Um, so or do I still have another three? Yeah, two turns. That's what I thought. So for one thing, it's going to set up more wood on the board moving into the stage, at least theoretically. But it will also um, it will also set me up for a possible skyfall if you know I, I mess up and fall short. Um, I have a higher likelihood of getting a skyfall that'll get me to that six combo. So whenever possible, that's what I that's what I like to try and do. Um, and then with this sort of a setup here, I try and do as much pathing as possible. So you can see I didn't try and go, you know, stack, stack, and, and move across or any of that sort of stuff. I did a few stacks and kind of did some pathing around the board to make sure I get to the six combos. Um, anyways, 
So moving on here, this this one actually doesn't matter. You could do like a two two combo and just hit your or wh wh however many uh, attack attribute colors you have. Hit them all and he's dead. Um, and then here we go ahead and make sure we have a Bastet active available for us. We use that with a multi turn buff. He'll do return to zero, and you pretty much one shot him. So pretty uh, standard Zayrog setup here. Um, so about the weather, it's gorgeous out. Actually, as soon as I'm done with this, I've got some outdoor housework to get done. But uh, I won't mind it on a day like today. It's mid 60s in mid March when I'm making this video. So pretty good. Um, I decided to go ahead and use for Dandy active over May May simply because uh, if it comes down to it, um, we do have the red sub element attacking as well. Hopefully, we're not relying on the three red sub elements to get a kill, but hey, you never know. Um, so, I want to make a. I was trying to make. Um, multiple TPAs and match up, but I, I messed up a little bit there, but it's okay. I had matches instead of TPAs, but obviously we were able to get through. And um, that was actually, let's see, we're gonna see in just a moment, the Bastet I was using was one of my friends and fellow YouTuber, the JLow. So thanks for the uh, Bastet there, JLow. Um, Okay, so moving on, this is Nordy's. Is that the, the guy's name? Nordy's? The, um, so again, it's another rogue dungeon. This is actually the first time I'm doing this dungeon. Um, and I just looked on Puzzle Dragon X for some recommended teams, and um, someone just said you could tear through it with, uh, with Yomi Dragon. And this is my, my first time. I didn't try any other teams. I figured, what the heck, I've got a good Yomi Dragon team. Let's give it a shot. Um, unfortunately, there, I was trying to generate some Dark Orbs and was unable to. Um, so we do get banged up a bit here. But this team is fully, actually not quite fully, but almost fully 297. My Awoken Pandora is like 243. Um, so... Uh, what's it called? I, I have a decent amount of hit points even at the beginning when you're at a very low level. And granted, these are generally high cost monsters, so you see I'm not really leveling up much. So um, you're really relying on the fact that the attack multiplier is so high. You're able to heal up. Um, and again, I checked in Puzzle Dragon X, and their attack is between two and six thousand a pop so I knew I could tank it and try and generate orbs on my own and I'd be able to uh, hopefully heal up afterwards as well so we're doing a good job healing attacking generating orbs and not using actives when it's unnecessary um, here these guys will hit for eleven thousand meaning it is necessary to use an active so we go ahead and use Yomi Draw and Yomi Draw is such a uh, fantastic card, um, you know, as a utility, bind clear, unbindable, creates attacking orbs, creates healing orbs, um, really pretty useful there, I have to say. Um, let's see, so we got, uh, um, what's this guy's name, Ferch? Ferch? Yeah, we got, we, or no, it's just a light swordsman, shining dragon knight, whatever it is. Um, we got the light one, we're dark, he's dead. Easy enough. Um, so moving on, we have the Tornado Dragon, and he gives you a big old countdown. So again, you can kind of hang out, um, match up a bit. You don't really have to worry about um, activating here. You can see I actually make sure I don't make any matches. Um, and it's just a good time to get Yomi Dragon actors back up because they're always useful. You know, if you're if you're going in a board uh, a board where uh, Pandora can't create too many darks with uh, the amount of greens on the board or something like that. Being able to boost it up that little bit is just super, super useful. Um, so you can see here, again, just kind of uh, getting rid of some orbs. Actually, it was a little risky by leaving two verticals um, exposed, so I could have wasted them on a skyfall by mistake. Um, but we're able to match up. The amount of time extends here is very useful as well because I'm able to get that five match and get a good five, six combos on average, uh, which I definitely was not able to do when I first started um, using Yomi Dragon. So here, obviously, I'm trying to just figure out how this 
dungeon kind of concludes, who's coming up next, how many stages are left, um, just to try and figure out which active I want to use. Obviously, I had to use one there. Um, and I almost messed up by connecting there. And um, the, one of the cool things about playing a dark team is it is, uh, how would you say it, un, un, unopposed, un, undefendable, whatever. You know, it does double against light, but it doesn't do half against anyone. So, for instance, you know, a fire team will do half against water cards, uh, etc. Um, so here we have, um, who's, who's this guy? Is this, is this 3DIA? 3DIA, I hate 3DIA. He's such a jerk. Um, thankfully, we're left with five orbs on the board, so 3DIA can uh, suck it. He's going down. Um, meaning we are moving on to the boss here. And I kind of, I forgot that, you know, we had the dual uh, forms here. So I was like, all right, second to last stage. And all of a sudden I'm at the boss. I'm like, oh my goodness, I totally did not remember that. Um, but, you know, a lot of these guys, I mean, this first form has four and a quarter million hit points. And then after that, we're looking at um, uh, 8.6 million hit points. So pretty strong, um, pretty strong boss here. But... You know, I decided uh, what would be fun is just kind of uh, killing him. So I did that, moving on, and he goes to bind everyone. And so I wanted to make sure, for one thing, that I was going to have my Yomi Dragon active up. I did read ahead and make sure that I was going to be ready with my Yomi Dragon active. Um, unfortunately, I kind of stupidly made a row at the last second there. Um, so... Uh, I didn't do any sort of substantial attack, but I was able to unbind everyone. We were able to create a nice uh, uh, dark and heal board. And after making the full match, we want to make TPAs and additional matches, whatever we could do. You can see I, I managed a five there. And with everything being enhanced, that was definitely enough. Um, Okuni Nushi, I, even though I guess it's not really advised, I put attack latents on him, I had them, he's kind of a key attacker that breaks defense on certain stuff, and you can see that was my first run through. Um, now unfortunately what we have here is a still image of Hell Demon being cleared because I was in the middle of the run, I got a phone call I had to take, I paused the recording, went back in, got the clear with Raw Dragon, so it was another Raw Dragon video. Um, and unfortunately, at that point, I realized I did not ever resume the recording. So that is that, guys. That was the final stage there. I have no stone from this because I have not beaten Tengu yet. Um, this is the last day of Descended Challenge. I'm hoping to still clear Tengu. I actually put together a interesting non-typical uh, team with... Um, uh, is it Fist of the North Star guys? I forget who the heck it is. I think it's Fist of the North Star guys. I have so many of them um, uh, skilled up. Or maybe it's Final Fantasy guys. I don't know what they are, but they're low cost. They have uh, damage latents, and I think um, I'd be able to clear it if I get any matching leads up. So hopefully I can report back. I got a snow globe and a stone, but other than that, every single one of these dungeons has been cleared. Um, almost on video. Uh, no thanks to that phone call I got. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, it's a longer video. This one, I guess, um, I guess longer videos are a little more interesting when I'm actually running the dungeon instead of just talking through them, especially if I'm using kind of uh, the same teams I typically do. Um, anyways, I want to get some more exciting content out for you guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this series, and you'll see me next time. Alpha out.